Hello, and welcome back to Storytime with Eric Zimmer. Where we last left off in The Trumpet of the Swan, Lewis, after being successful in Boston, is now working and getting even more money in Philadelphia. He'll finally be able to pay off his father's debts for the stolen trumpet. But I have a feeling that something else is coming too. I wonder what it is. So you ready? All right, let's begin. Chapter 17, Serena. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> During the next 10 weeks, Lewis got rich. He went every evening except Sundays to the nightclub and played his trumpet for the customers. He did not like the job at all. The place was big and crowded and noisy. Everyone seemed to be talking too loudly, eating too much, and drinking too much. Most birds like to go to sleep at sundown. They do not want to stay up half the night entertaining people. But Lewis uh, is a musician, and musicians can't choose their working hours. Unless they're self-employed, of course. They must work when their employer wants them to. Every Saturday night, Lewis collected his pay. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> Mr. Lucas was always on hand to receive his agent's fee to ten percent from Lewis. After Lewis had paid Mr. Lucas, he still had four hundred and fifty dollars left. He would put this in his money bag, hop into the waiting taxicab, and return to Bird Lake, arriving at around three a.m. His money bag grew so stuffed with money, Lewis was beginning to worry. On Sunday afternoons, if the weather was good, crowds of people would gather on the shores of Bird Lake, and Lewis would stand on the island in the middle of the lake and give a concert. This became a popular event in Philadelphia, where there isn't much going on on Sunday. Lewis took the concert very seriously. By playing for the people, he was earning the right to remain free and not have a wing clipped. Well, he wasn't going to have his wing clipped anyway. He always, was always at his best on Sundays. Instead of playing jazz and rock and folk and country western, he would play selections from the works of the great composers Ludwig van Beethoven, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, and Johann Sebastian Bach, music he had learned by listening to records at Camp Kukuskus. Lewis also liked the music of George Gershwin and Stephen, Forst, Stephen Foster. When he played Summertime from Porgy and Bess, the people of Philadelphia felt that it was the most thrilling music they had ever heard. Lewis was considered so good on the trumpet that he was invited to make a guest appearance with the Philadelphia Symphony Orchestra. I wonder, since he was still alive at the time, if Leopold Stokowski was still conducting them, like he did in 1940 for the original Fantasia. <laughs> One day, about a week before Christmas, a great storm came up. The sky grew dark, the wind blew a howling gale, it made a whining noise, windows rattled, shutters came off their hinges, old newspapers and candy wrappers were picked up by the wind and scattered like confetti. Many of the creatures in the zoo became restless and uneasy. Over in the elephant house, the elephants trumpeted an alarm. Lions roared and paced back and forth. The great black cockatoo screamed, whatever that is. Keepers rushed here and there, shutting doors and windows for making everything and making everything secure against the awful force of the gale. The waters of Bird Lake were ruffled by the strong, mighty wind, and for a while the lake looked like a small ocean. Many of the water birds sought protection on the island. Lewis rode out the gale on the lake, in the lee of the island. He faced the wind and kept paddling with his feet, his eyes bright with wonder at the strength of the blast. Suddenly he saw an object in the sky. It was coming down out of the clouds. At first he couldn't make out what it was. Maybe it's a flying saucer, he thought. Then he realized that it was a large white bird, struggling desperately to come in against the wind. Its wings were beating rapidly. In a moment it splashed down and flopped ashore. Lewis, where it, where it lay sprawled out almost as if it were dead. Lewis stared and stared and stared. Then he looked again. It looks like a swan, he thought. It was a swan. 
It looks like a trumpeter swan, he thought. It was a trumpeter swan. My goodness, said Lewis himself. It looks like Serena. It is Serena! She's here at last! My prayers have been answered! Lewis was right. Serena, the swan of his desiring, had been caught by uh, the fierce storm and blown all the way across America. When she looked down and saw a bird lake, she ended her flight almost dead from exhaustion. Lewis was tempted to rush right over, but then he thought, No, that would be a mistake. She's in no condition at the moment to perceive the depth of my affection and the extent of my love. She's too tired. I'll wait. I'll bide my time. I'll give her a chance to recover. Then I'll renew our acquaintance and make myself known. Lewis did not go to his job that night. The weather was too bad. All night he stayed away, keeping watch at a slight distance from his beloved. When morning came, the wind subsided. The skies cleared. The lake grew calm. The storm was over. Serena stirred and woke. She was still exhausted and very mussy. Lewis stayed away from her. I'll just wait, he thought. When in love, one must take risks. But I'm not going to risk anything with a bird who is too tired to see straight. I won't hurry, and I won't worry. Back at on back home on Upper Red Rock Lake, I was without a voice. She ignored me because I could not tell her my love. Now, thanks to my brave father, I will I have my trumpet. Through the power of music, I will impress her with the intensity of my desire and the strength of my devotion. I'll. She will hear me say, "Coho." I'll tell her I love her in a, str in a language anybody can understand. The language of music. She will hear the trumpet of the swan. That's the title of the story. And she will be mine. At least I hope she will. Usually, if a strange bird appeared on Bird Lake, one of the keepers could, would report its arrival to the head, head man in charge of birds, whose office was in the birdhouse. The head man would then give the order to have the new bird pinioned, have one of its wings clipped. But today, the keep but today the keeper who usually tended the waterfowl was sick with the flu and had not come to work. Nobody noticed that a new trumpeter swan had arrived. Serena was being very quiet anyways. She was not attracting any attention. There were now five trumpeters on the lake. There were the original three captive swans, Curiosity, Felicity, and Apathy. There was, of course, Lewis. And now there was the new arrival, Serena, still exhausted, but beginning to revive. Towards the end of the afternoon, Serena aroused herself, looked at her surroundings, had a bite to eat, took a bath, and then walked out of the water and stood for a long while preening her feathers. She felt distinctly better. And when her feathers were all smoothed out, she looked extremely beautiful, stately, serene, graceful, and very feminine. Lewis trembled when he saw how truly lovely she was. He was again tempted to swim over and say Coho and see if she remembered him. But he had a better idea. There's no hurry, he thought. She's not going to leave Philadelphia tonight. I will go to my job, and when I get back from work, I shall abide her near her all through the night. Just at daylight, I'll awaken her with a song of love and desire. She will be drowsy. The sound of my trumpet will enter her sleepy brain and overcome her with emotion. My trumpet will be the first sound she hears. I will be irresistible. I will be the first thing she hears when she opens her eyes, and she will love me from that moment on. Lewis was well satisfied with his plan and began to make preparations. He swam ashore, removed his things, hid them under a bush, then returned to the water where he fed and bathed. Then he fixed his feathers carefully. He wanted to look his back next morning when the meeting was to take place. He drifted around for a while, thinking of all those, so all the songs he drifted around. I mean, thinking of all the songs he liked and just trying to decide which one to play to wake Serena in the morning. He finally decided to play Beautiful Dreamer, Wake Unto Me. He had always loved that song. It was sad and sweet. She will be a beautiful dreamer, thought Lewis, and she will wake unto me. The song fits the situation perfectly. He was determined to play the song better than he had ever played it before. It was one of his best numbers. He really knew how to play it awfully well. 
Once when he played it at one of his Sunday concerts, a music critic from a Philadelphia newspaper heard him, and the next m morning the paper said, Some of his notes are like jewels held up to the light. The emotion he transmits is clean and pure and sustained. Lewis had memorized that statement. He was proud of it. Now he was anxious for morning to come, but he still had his job at the nightclub to go to. He knew the night would be long and that he wouldn't be able to sleep. Lewis swam ashore to pick up his things. When he looked under the bush, he received a terrible jolt. His medal was there. His slate and chalk pencil were there. His money bag was there. But where was the trumpet? Uh-oh. This, that's not good. Poor Lewis. His heart almost stopped. Oh no, he said to himself. Oh no. Without his trumpet, his whole life would be ruined. All his plans for the future would collapse. He was frantic with anger and fear and dismay. He dashed back into the water and looked up and down the lake. Far off he saw a small wood duck that seemed to have something shiny in its mouth. It was the trumpet, all right. The duck was trying to play it. Lewis was furious. He skimmed down the lake, going even faster than he had on the day he had saved Applegate from drowning. He swam straight for the duck, knocked him on the head with a swift blow from his wing, and grabbed the precious trumpet. The duck fainted. Lewis wiped the horn, blew the spit out of it, and hung it around his neck where it belonged. Now he was ready. Thank God he recovered it. Let the night come. Let the hours pass. Let morning come when my beautiful dreamer wakes unto me. Night came at last. Nine o'clock came. Lewis went off to work riding in the cab. The zoo quieted down. The visitors had all gone home. Many of the animals slept or snoozed. A few of them, the great cats, the raccoon, the armadillo, the ones that enjoyed the night time, prowled and became restless. Bird Lake was clothed in darkness. Most of the waterfowl tucked their heads under their wings and slept. At one end of the lake, the three captive swans, curiosity, felicity, and apathy, were already asleep. Near the island, Serena, the beautiful Serena, was fast asleep and dreaming. Her long white neck was folded neatly back. Her head rested on soft feathers. Lewis got home from work at two o'clock in the morning. 